Well, let me explain what I have in my hands. Uh, here I am standing in front of the view out of John Kingerley's studio over this extraordinary bay and the hills behind it. But in my hands is a work by John Kingerley. It's a simple piece of paper that he's taken and he's wetted it and laid it over a mold to create this tremendous corrugated surface you see on the back here, this corrugated surface. But on it, what has he done? He's highlighted in darks and ochres and touches of blue and red to get this rich landscape. And here he is uh, in the simplest of means, with the simplest of materials, creating really um, a metaphor for the beauty of this particular place right outside of his studio window. Now, the last place on earth you expect to find Dr. Ted Pillsbury is the steepest marine in County Cork. What brings you to Ireland, Dr. Ted? Well, it's the art of John Kingerley. And I had the good fortune, uh, oh, four or five years ago, to receive an invitation to a home. I went there to look at a work of art, and it was an interesting work of art. But at this home, um, there were two rooms with paintings. Um, by John Kingerley, and I feasted my eyes. I went from one picture to the next, and I couldn't believe the richness um, and the originality, um, the talent of this artist that I'd never heard of before. And my interest and curiosity were whetted, and I tracked down other paintings by him, and I couldn't resist the invitation uh, to come to Ireland, uh, such a beautiful country, uh, to meet this artist and to see more of his work. What was it that's so special, looking at the paintings, what was it that, that caught your, your eye? Well, I think it was the special texture. Um, the paint was built up in a way. Um, it had a sense of relief and a subtlety of application and, and, and surface um, and a, a palette that was both so expressive but yet so limited. Um, and there was so much meaning packed into these small panels uh, by John Kingerley. Um, I hadn't seen painting of this quality uh, in years. And I have a great respect for some of the great painters. Uh, um, I worked at the British Art Center at Yale, which was a great collection of British art. I love the paintings of Turner. I've come to admire also the work of Frank Auerbach and Lucian Freud, certainly Francis Bacon, but I thought here was an artist that was, uh, was the true uh, successor to Turner in terms of a British artist who understood paint and who was using it in the most expressive and um, original way. Now, before you came, uh, you were aware that, that John Kingerley and his wife Mo live in a, a rural part of Ireland, a somewhat Spartan life. How has seeing how he lives and how he works affected your views of what he actually produces? Well, reading about uh, John Kingerley, um, I suspected that his work was an expression of his environment, and there was a linkage between his life and the environment of his life and his work. Um, and I particularly was interested that parts of the year he spends in Granada and in Morocco, and I could see um, the interest in light, I could see the activity, the urban activity in some of his paintings, and I could see the lush and rich landscape of Ireland, uh, water, rock, moss, um, in the surfaces of his paintings. But what really struck me uh, was the um, scale of his home. Um, John lives a frugal life, 
and his use of space is very frugal and um, discreet. And to see this uh, sturdy man with strong convictions and a powerful um, hand as an, as an artist working in such confined spaces, I understood why he was making these great pictures on such a small scale that had such power but were so limited in their physical size. Um, he is a person who packs uh, a big punch um, in a small uh, in a in a in a small manner, and I think it's uh, it's it's another aspect of his work that is so important: the economy of his means of expression that is so broad and universal and powerful. Now he took you to see the cottage he lived in for five years when he first when they first came to Ireland, which is even more Spartan and more remote, uh, a mile and a half up, up a mountain. But what did you think about that? Well, that was probably one of the most unbelievable experiences of my life. Um, I think Americans uh, think of self-sufficiency uh, in a very um, idealistic way, but I was really um, aware after walking a mile and a half from the car park to his cottage, uh, what he had to do to bring his groceries his bombola, his gas that he needed to live in. And at various stages in this long uh, walk uh, up this hilly road to his cottage, to his remote cottage, I said, now how could you have gone further than this? And he said, well, you go a few steps and then you stop and you rest. Then you realize perhaps you can get by with a little less of this and a little less of that. So I really realized that here was a person that had reduced his life to the very minimum um, uh, basic needs of existence. And in his art, he'd done exactly the same thing. Now, John had huge success uh, last November when he became the first British artist to be invited to have a solo show at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Beijing. His work was, was very enthusiastically received. Uh, how do you think this will impact on, on global interest in his work? Well, I think that John Kingerley's work um, supersedes um, the barriers of a school or any particular region. There's a universal message. And I would like to think that the success in China has something to do with John's background, John's attachment to the soil, John's being a working man, he comes from a working family, and he's worked every day of his life, whether he was gardening or whether he was teaching or making ceramics or engaged in some other task, but he's been working his whole life, and I feel that uh, and he's now very much an artist of the, of the, of the, of the country, of the, of the soil, of the, of the country. And I think this resonates in a country like China, which is really a very rural nation, um, but it has been recently uh, rather rapidly um, industrialized. I think there's a, there's a, uh, perhaps um, the Cultural Revolution in China was something that was created just so that we can appreciate John Kingerley. He's a person that is so dedicated to his art that he has, uses his art as a way to overcome any vanity, overcome any ego, and he infuses his art with his personality and his ego. Um, and that is where he speaks boldly and strongly to a broad number of people. Um, He's a person who's extremely well read, he's very thoughtful, he has certain opinions, but he puts these ideas uh, into his work and he, he really suppresses his ego um, to infuse um, all of the energy and all of the uh, character of his personality, his humanity, his sense of being a person in this moment in time uh, into, his, into his art, into his paintings. And there are really two sides to his work. There are his works on paper, his collages, in which he takes bits of um, 
bits of books, things that he's read, newspapers, film clips, stamps, and he organizes them together. He puts a word down, a poem that he's read. These are the ways in which he, he keeps his life connected with I mean, every day. But it is in his paintings, which are so worked and reworked and nurtured and gardened to their final completion in, in weeks and months, even years of, of labor. It's in these paintings that he's really striving for um, a universal message. I could tell that he relied upon a, a palette knife um, to and used a palette knife in an extremely expressive way. Well, a knife is something that you use in a in a in a kitchen uh, to cut and chop and to spread. Um, but he uses that knife with all of these um, wonderful pigments, mixed hand mixed in oils. He uses this uh, knife, this palette knife, in the most expressive fashion. He also does not use a paintbrush the way a normal ah, academically yes. trained painter uses a paintbrush, which is just to lay on strokes of paint on the surface. He uses the paintbrush the way a carpenter uses a hammer. He pounds the paint onto the surface with the end of these broad paint strokes, and he just um, goes over with the paint and he blots the paint on to create the layers and layers of rich texture and surface. And when he wants to complicate it even more, he takes the knife and scrapes off some of this paint and moves it to another area, puts it aside, lets it dry for two days, and then brings it back out to see if he is excited and what more he wants to do. And then with the help of his wife, he says, yes, I think this is finished. And he puts his wonderful signature on the painting. And you have a John Kinger. It's a, it's a figure uh, in a canoe on a boat. Um, and I'm sure it's a metaphor for his life, which is a journey on a boat, the boat through life. Paddle and uh, a canoe. A paddle and a canoe. And uh, yes, a figure with a paddle and canoe. And, uh, but it adds this wonderful sense of, um, and it shows something about his ego. If John Kingerly was a certain kind of an artist, you would see the name John Kingerly boldly on it, but instead, no, he uses this, this rather humorous symbol, uh, which stands for him and his character. Obviously, it was John's great talent that, um, uh, that caught my attention. The way he paints, the way he builds a surface, the way he creates light and texture and, and, uh, and animates a surface with his colors and with the medium. Yes. Um, but I, you know, wanted to come to Ireland to understand better really his vision, his message. What was he using his art? What was, what was the, his program? What was he addressing? What did he want us to understand and see? And coming here, I really understood that he wants us to have a completely new awareness of the, um, of the, of the, of really the, the jeopardy of this miracle of nature, of the world. And uh, there's really nothing that could be more important than this message, which is that we must understand and appreciate and take better care of our environment. We must care for the world that we have inherited. Um, this is a, a, a gift from God, the world, and we must protect it against global warming. We must protect it against everything else. And this message supersedes that and is far more important to me than many other messages about issues of gender or racial injustice or poverty and other matters, which are indeed extremely important matters uh, for the world to be concerned about, for artists to deal with. But John, I think, is dealing with a, a more critical, universal message that is becoming more and more relevant to all of us every day. And a hundred years from now, will people know the name John Kingerly? Well, I hope that John Kingerly will have as much influence on the 21st century as Turner, his great ancestor, had um, 
on the 19th century, and even Paul Cezanne, an artist that John Kingerly deeply reveres, had on 20th century art. But isn't it beautiful what it does? Yeah. It creates that texture, and then it's a, it's, it's a logical diptych. 